They live in gilded palaces and panoramic penthouses. But their palaces are fortified and their penthouses are high security. For the hyper-wealthy, the everyday threat of abduction is real and made more real by historical events. Billionaires will look at security, primarily at the safety of their family. Kidnap is a big concern for billionaires. They worry a lot about, you know, how safe is my family, as well as once your name is out there, what will be the impact knowing how wealthy they are? That responsibility becomes burdensome. One of the most well-known and complex cases of kidnapping was of the heiress Patty Hearst. Kidnapped in 1973, $6 million, equivalent to over $33 million today, was paid for her return. Better if I were home right now and... I'd like to get this over with so I can go home. There was a family I worked with that had bodyguards. It was because there had been death threats. The ultra-high net worth who's been kidnapped could very well be hurt or harmed in some way. We've seen it already in the UK, hostile attacks on individuals, which has involved threats towards members of the family, if not uh, taking hold of the family, with a view to asking someone to get the safes open within the property. I've had two families where there have been kidnappings, and that stayed with them forever. There was one billionaire who was uh, kidnapped in the Sudan. And it was very important for him and his family that he had K&R insurance, which is kidnap and ransom insurance. So they held him for six months, and eventually the transaction was actually made. So these terrorists were paid off. He was released. And in typical fashion for a billionaire, he was released on the Friday and returned behind his desk at work on the Monday to continue his job. There was one occasion where the ransom amount that had been demanded was $10 million. And the client made the mistake and the error in the stress of the situation of stating 10 million pounds, to which the kidnapper retorted, 10 million pounds will do fine by us, which inevitably, uh, that foreign exchange was probably about $15 million. A simple and costly mistake but a sum dwarfed by other ransom amounts known to have been paid to kidnappers, allegedly, of course. It's rumored that the Kwok family from Hong Kong paid 67 million pounds for their son Walter's safe return. And in 1996, a reputed 121 million pounds was paid to secure the release of businessman Victor Lee. The threat of high-level attacks on the super-rich is feeding the demand for more extreme protective measures. Because they can, billionaires are now spending hundreds of thousands of pounds on panic rooms, bunkers and safe core suites accessed through secret passageways. The object of a safe room is to get the client to create a barrier and a time delay between them and an attack. This is one of our so sort of straightforward basic panic rooms we've got here. This is a, a six-sided unit, so basically we have protection from all sides. When this thing's bolted as a cube, it's very substantial. A panic room is sort of the last resort in an envelope of security around somebody's premises. You, you'll have anything from CCTV to outside perimeter, manned security as well in a lot of cases. These are people living in their own kind of micro-communities. They worry that we hate them, and a lot of people do. We've seen a growing demand in the last six to 12 months. I think people are trusting some of these secure rooms now for some assets as well. I think they've got somewhere to put valuables they don't want to leave, leave out. But being billionaires, there are so many valuables to choose from, and careful prioritisation is essential. Is it? their art collection? Is it their wine collection? Is it the wife? Is it the children? Uh, it seems obvious that most people are going to say, well, of course, my family comes first. But I have clients that if they lost a certain art collection, it would be the end of them. With multiple properties around the globe, billionaires regularly cross time zones and borders. So protecting your family and prized possessions becomes a huge challenge if you're constantly on the move. The billionaire class is like a very rare migrating bird. They go from the Miami Art Fair to New York, to the Caribbean in Easter, to the Hamptons in the summer. 
and they take with them their toys and their yachts. Being on a yacht is the one place that is so safe. It's a very happy time and it's very private. They have the financial power to acquire any experience, any product, any person. And yet, you know, the, the deal was you can do all that, but you have to live in this isolated, sterile world. Fear and paranoia constantly battle with any sense of well-being in many billionaires' minds. Even on their floating palaces, some billionaires suffer so much from perpetual distrust that they can never truly kick back and relax. If you go down to San Tropez in August, there's all these big boats and guys with women on their boats. They're, they're 60 years old with a, you know, a pot belly, and, and they know full well that the only reason the girls are attracted is because of their money. But if freeloaders on deck pose a potential problem, a far bigger threat to the modern billionaire comes from pirates. Today, the modern pirate is a, a very different uh, animal to, to what we perhaps have grown up understanding. So when somebody builds a 100-metre super yacht, it's not always as fast and stealthy as other vessels that could perhaps get close and board them. Although pirate attacks are rare in the Med and Caribbean, they do still happen, even here. In 2008, the 20 million pound yacht Tiara, moored off Corsica, was stormed by four masked men and its passengers robbed of 100,000 pounds worth of valuables. There is an app now that will tell you where anybody's yacht is moored at any time. And so the idea that you are in this kind of, you know, in the Mediterranean all by yourself or over because anybody can find you on their little boats. So it's become a bit of a problem. No man is an island, even one on his super yacht. And once again, a huge investment in personal protection must be catered for. I think a super yacht could easily be attacked. It comes down to what the security detail is for the client. Do they have men uh, protecting them and available? And do they have devices that are able to tell them what's in the surrounding waters? The billionaire's understandable obsession with safety has led to some ingenious futuristic gadgets which allow them to stay one step ahead of any threat, whether at sea or back on dry land. Fast vein is a new technology that identifies humans from the veins inside their finger using a scanning device uh, which shines near-infrared light through the top of the finger and a camera underneath identifies the person in about a second, it has the ability for the client to save them carrying keys altogether. They just use this to open their doors. The technology requires blood in the veins, and in severing a digit, you will not have a scannable vein pattern that will operate. So cutting somebody's finger off will not work. Coming up, when your financial advisor is stealing from you and the threat of cyber attack. The ultra high net worth individuals really do need to consider what they say and who they say it to. When you have that level of wealth, there will be individuals within the world that will be after you and try and extort you. 